Have you ever thought about opening your own gym? Have you ever wondered what it would be like to own your dream training facility? But how much would it cost? How would it be run? How would it make money? Where would you even start? Well, at 22 years old, those were the exact thoughts that I had. And by the age of 23, I went all in and opened One Body Athletic and turned it into a six-figure profitable success within the first 12 months. Find out how in this video. Okay, so the first thing that I want to mention is that this video isn't and never really was about the money. Aww. I just had to make sure that I got your attention. And now that I do, let's go back to where this all began. At the age of 20, I left my full-time job at a Nottingham newspaper where I worked as a graphic designer to go all in on pursuing my passion for fitness. I just completed my first ever preparation for a junior men's physique competition. And although it didn't go to plan, not even getting first call out of being too muscular for the category, I know, right? I'd well and truly fallen in love with the fitness process. I began working with various supplement companies, fitness clothing brands, and was really starting to gain some level of traction in the fitness industry. I felt in my soul that the time was right to turn my lifelong hobby and passion for health and fitness and turn it into a career. And the most obvious route for me was to become a personal trainer. Now, I'd taken a huge leap by up and leaving my job. And I'll be honest, I didn't hate the job. It was relatively well paid, I'm super creative, and I enjoyed it. However, I hated commuting, sitting on a train, sitting in a car, and sitting at a desk all day. I'm absolutely not about that sedentary life. Plus, I had this burning desire to be somebody of principle who impacts people's lives. How exactly, I wasn't entirely sure, but personal training seemed like a good way to start. So I took the leap and signed up to an intensive four-week personal training course to gain the credentials I needed. Now, of course, at this time, there were absolutely no funds coming in. I was living at home, so I didn't have many overheads to worry about, but I still needed cash. So I continued working as a self-employed graphic designer to help make ends meet. And in all honesty, this was going really well. I was making bank, creating websites, logos, and branding, but it still wasn't the end game. So I soon qualified, and it was now time to head out into the city of Sheffield and make my mark. What they don't tell you is that passing the test to become a personal trainer is like learning to drive. You don't really learn anything until you are on the road. So it's time to craft my tools and sharpen my arsenal as a credible personal trainer, and as much as anything, a fully fledged self-employed business owner. The greatest lesson of all. So it was here in the sunny city of Sheffield where I started my personal training career at Ponds Forge International Swimming Center, which is a local leisure center. This is where it all began. And here I crafted my tools and sharpened my arsenal. Now, I had no clients to begin with, so instead of paying for rent, I would work here as a fitness instructor. And this allowed me to have the time to parade across the gym floor, offering my advice and my expertise to start to drum up interest. I would offer free boot camp sessions, I would offer free nutrition seminars, free PT sessions, and eventually word got around and I built up a client base. Now it's fair to say when it came to obtaining clients, I had a rolling start as many people had followed my own transformation journey whilst I prepared for a physique show and were immediately interested in jumping on board. That said, I still needed to accumulate a good number of clients to create a genuine income. So here I would coach from 6 a.m. until 9 p.m. with the odd slot in between to eat and to train myself. Now, as a young and ambitious 20 year old, I didn't mind this at all. I would literally work my fingers to the bone, pouring every amount of energy and enthusiasm I had into my clients and their results. Then it dawned on me, I had hit a ceiling. There were no more hours left in the day. I couldn't work with any more people. My reach and my impact had hit a gigantic roadblock. There, an idea began to form. So being on the gym floor day after day, I would see thousands of people, hundreds of thousands, join year after year, knowing full well that they were gonna join and not get the result that they were looking for. Many would just walk in, hop on a treadmill, then jump from machine to machine, text between sets, and then leave, ultimately never getting the outcome that they signed up for in the first place. I suppose when you think about it, gyms are largely just huge rooms filled with equipment. Equipment that most people don't know how to use, or even if they do, they don't want to use it effectively, or at least consistently. For me, it was the equivalent to going into a garage and utilizing the tools to fix my own car. I wouldn't have a clue where to start, what to do, nor would I have the desire to figure it out either. Now, although this made it very easy for me as a personal trainer, I couldn't help but think that surely gyms could and should be run better. What if people actually joined a gym to get the result that they were actually looking for and got it? 
where they could be pushed through workouts, held accountable, be given their nutrition, get a genuine return of investment instead of wasting their time and their money. What if I could open a gym that ticked all of those boxes, create a brand that people trusted, that consistently delivered, that fellow coaches would want to work for and be part of, a brand that broke the mold and did things differently? That brand was One Body Athletic. <laughs> Now, it's fair to say, I was fired up. An idea had formed, a fuse had been lit, and I was hungrier than ever to make the next big leap in my career, in my fitness journey, in my life. I was opening the gym. I didn't know how, but by God, I was gonna figure it out. How did this not already exist? Or even if it did, how could I do it better? Where would I start? How much would it cost? How would we fund it? Who should I speak to about this? So many questions and seemingly so little time. It's time to put pen to paper and figure it all out. Yeah, this was gonna be harder than I thought. I'd roughly figured out that we were gonna need around 50K to get this project off the ground. Now, I certainly did not have that kind of cash at hand. I saved money, but the plan was to use that to buy my first home with my then fiance. Now wife and mother of my child with another on the way, in case you were wondering what happened, not a different fiance. Nice. So it was time to look for a bank loan, and as then a 22-year-old with zero credit score, this was absolutely not easy to come by. No bank would touch me with a barge pole. Here's a barge pole, in case you're wondering. As you can see, it's pretty long. Then fortunately, I came across a government-funded scheme for young budding business entrepreneurs. And the maximum they would lend was 30K. It wasn't enough, but it was a start. This was it. This was my ticket. Little did I realize though that it would take the best part of a year for the application to be considered and to go through the qualification process. So in the meantime, I would continue building out the business plan, grafting as a personal trainer and saving money to invest. So being engaged to your partner and living at home really is not the one. It's a strange situation. It's kind of like you're fully fledged adults now, but not quite. I mean, I certainly didn't hate living at home, but it was time to fly the nest and start the next big chapter of my life. But Josh, what about the gym project? Surely this was going to slow things down and drain finances. The answer to that was yes, probably. However, I knew that this was going to take time and wasn't going to happen overnight. Heck, I wasn't entirely sure how long it was gonna take at all for that matter. And I wasn't gonna wait until then to finally move out and start my life with my future wife. <laughs> it's burp. Plus, it didn't really seem right to potentially open a fully fledged business and still live under my parents' roof. No, it was time to step up and be a man and become an adult, which was part one in taking ownership of my life. There was just one small problem. Just as the banks wouldn't touch me for a business loan, they certainly wouldn't touch me for a mortgage. What the f Did I mention that trying to be a responsible, independent adult was difficult? As a personal trainer, I lived a cash-rich lifestyle. So on paper, it looked as though I earned very little. And when you are applying for a mortgage, if you own your own business or you're self-employed, you need two to three years worth of books. Whereas if you are employed, all you need to show is two to three months worth of pay slips. Well, I certainly didn't have the time to wait for two to three years and my books looked terrible. So that meant only one solution. Yes, that meant getting a proper job. <laughs> So I applied for a bunch of jobs in the field that I was the most qualified in and most experienced in on paper, which was graphic design. I had an interview for a print company within the first week of applications and I got the job. The plan was working. Now, I wasn't about to give up on what I'd worked so hard to build. My personal training business was thriving. So I kept my highest paying clients, the most regular clients, and allocated the very few time slots that I had available. I would see clients from 5 a.m. till 8 a.m., then work 9 till 5, then see the clients again from 6 p.m. till 9 p.m. So as you can imagine, this was exhausting, but we were banking cash, a full-time wage, plus the side hustle, which all in all was setting us up perfectly for the house and the gym project. It did at times somewhat feel like a massive step back, like I was back to where I started to some extent, back at the mundane rat race, around by people who were living for the weekend and freaking hated Mondays. But the way I saw it, I was like an arrow being pulled back, ready to be shot forward into infinity and beyond. Fast forward three months into my probation period and I was pulled into the office. Josh, you aren't cut out for the nine to five life. You have too much about you to clock in and clock out. And right now you're standing on the edge of the rest of your life and I'm gonna give you the metaphorical push over the edge, I have no doubt you'll figure out how to fly on the way down. In a nutshell, my short spell at the job was done. I was fired. Shit. I mean, amazing. Those were words that would one day be used in my memoirs and I would stay with me forever, but damn. The loan for the gym hadn't yet been approved. We hadn't been given the green light for our mortgage. The reason I got the job in the first place, or had we? Turns out the application had literally just been approved 
with the three months of books. And that weekend, we had the first offer on our home accepted. Talk about skin of your teeth. We celebrated that weekend, then Monday rolled around at 8 a.m. I was sat at home on the sofa, not leaving for work. Josh, what are you doing? You're gonna be late. Yeah, I've kind of been sacked. Alice's answer was simple and straight to the point. Well, you best get to work then. So we had our house, our home, our base, our sanctuary. The personal training started to pick back up. Alice was working full time as a secondary school teacher. We booked our wedding day. I brought home a dog. Things were looking pretty good. However, we weren't getting any younger. And my desire to turn the pipe dream into reality was burning brighter than ever. I did not foresee a future where we merely existed, satisfied with our reality, living from paycheck to paycheck. I saw a future where we were thriving and consistently moving forward. A future where I made an impact and a difference to people's lives, a legacy. Not somebody who would just easily be forgotten. The gym, for sure, was our ticket to get there to turn our dreams into reality. So it was time to crank up the heat and get this show on the road. I chased the loan company hard and I managed to get myself in front of the board of investors. And honestly, it was basically like Dragon's Den where I had to prove I could inevitably make the business a success and ultimately not default on the 30K loan. This was character building to say the least. I had to know the ins and outs of the business model so that I could articulately answer whatever questions they wished to fire at me. Then I waited, and I waited, and I waited, and one day I finally got a call from my advisor who'd assisted me through the loan application process. The loan had been approved. I sat in my car and I practically reenacted the scene from Only Fools and Horses where they won the lottery. <laughs> this was it. Holy shit. It was go time. No time for caution. No time for error. It was make or break. Failure would mean falling and hard, and I wasn't about to let that happen. Success was the only option. Now that we had the funds, it was time to put pedal to the metal. Step one, secure a premises, check. We were super fortunate that the unit at the time that I had had my eye on was still available on the market, so we jumped in there with two feet. Annoyingly, step 1.2 changed the usage of the unit. We had absolutely no idea that we'd have to apply for a usage change for it to actually be used as a gym. Long story short, massive ball leg, but check. Step two, order equipment, check. This was the fun part. I can't tell you how good it felt adding all of my dream equipment items to the basket and ordering them. Step three, hire construction workers to renovate the unit, check. The unit was a completely empty shell, so I needed renovating entirely. We needed builders to build out the changing rooms, the bathrooms, the shower rooms, the mezzanine, the office and the bar area. Plumbers to do the showers, the toilets and the sinks. Electricians to do the lighting rig and the power supplies throughout. The decorators to ensure that everything looked up to standard. So all in all, <laughs> check. Step four, launch the damn thing. It was time to tell the world that we were here. Okay, maybe not the world, maybe just Sheffield and the surrounding areas, but retrospectively, I probably thought it was gonna be a case of build it and they'll come. That said, I knew that I needed to beat the drum, so we took to social media, banging out tons of graphics, promotional videos, posting about it. My good friend kindly filmed and edited loads of content for us at the time. We had a launch party and an opening day, and we had a pretty good response. Now, initially, the model was built to predominantly be a one-to-one -one personal training unit, a place for me to train my wealth of clients, whilst also having four to five other personal trainers renting space to coach their clients. Now, the problem was the coaches that rented space struggled to gain their own client base. As we weren't a mainstream gym with a regular footfall, there wasn't that much opportunity to pick up clients. Like, unless they could market themselves well via social media or had a very good referral rate, they were practically at sea without a paddle. Anybody that came through the door wanted to specifically work with me. Of course, it was great, but it meant that the coaches really weren't hanging around for long. This was a problem. Although my books were filled, I was only earning the same income as before. However, with now a huge added overhead of paying off the loan, the equipment, the rent, and collectively, all of the crazy overheads that I had accumulated. Sure, I could charge more, but that just didn't feel like the solution to the problem. What if I could deliver my coaching at scale? What if instead of working with people on a one-to-one -one basis, I could increase that to two-to-one, three-to-one, heck, even eight-to-one. The options were endless with the facility we had built. Now, we have been running generic boot camp style sessions alongside the personal training that, if I'm honest, I wasn't overly keen on. I'd always prided myself on delivering intensive and effective personal training sessions. And with the boot camps, I just didn't feel I could quite deliver the same unique experience. 
Our boot camps simply stuck to the status quo of what was traditionally expected of them. Timers, burpees, battle robes and tire flips and by no means is this bad. It certainly has its place, but for me it was the same as what everybody else offered. To stand out, we needed to be different. Why couldn't we just deliver the exact training that we did with PT, but in a larger group environment? Also alongside that, why can't we still just deliver the same level of accountability and nutrition coaching to ensure that our clients actually got the results they were looking for? This was why we'd set up the gym in the first place, to help people at scale, and this was how we was gonna do it. So we set about devising a strategy to relaunch ourselves as the group transformation specialists. And to kick things off, we needed a challenge, an offer, something that would entice people to jump on board and go all in. We launched a six week transformation challenge we named T42. 42 days to kickstart your health and fitness journey. 42 days for us to educate with basic lessons on how to lose body fat, how to flexible diet, and how to manage your social life. 42 days to show the city of Sheffield what we could do and ultimately what they themselves could do in hopes that it would subsequently mean people would join us for the long term on the back end. Now, after speaking to fellow business owners and speaking with sales and marketing consultants, we packaged an offer that was a much more premium price packet than we had for our previous boot camps. The general consensus was people that pay more simply pay more attention. We had a marketing team launch our first Facebook ad campaign and it went crazy. Leads were flying in at a rate we couldn't even comprehend. Clearly, our message resonated. Clearly, this was what people needed. In the first week alone, we signed up over 65 new clients by getting a total of 17,000 pounds in less than seven days of consultations. A huge chunk of the repayments that we owe. The challenge was a smash here. The participants absolutely crushed it. The results were insane. Almost all of the members joined us on the back end. Alice had no choice but to leave her job as a teacher and come on board for the next six months. We rinsed and repeated this, filling the gym with over 200 members, causing a demand for expansion. We literally paid the tenant next door to leave the unit so that we could knock through and expand our facility. So we paid off pretty much all of our loans and literally poured all the profits back into the business to continue progressing and evolving, ready to further dominate the fitness scene in Sheffield and transform even more lives. Then COVID happened. The ribbon was cut and literally days later, Boris closed the gyms and shut down the country. From this evening, I must give the British people a very simple instruction. You must stay at home. Now, as you'll already be very much aware, lockdowns were dreadful for everyone, no more so than gym owners. We were closed, full stop. Dreams shattered, hearts ripped out. At this point, we had five full-time employees, close to 300 members, and in the blink of an eye, our business was torn apart. Or was it? It was sink or swim, do or die time. We could either bury our head in the sand, have a nice cold pint and wait for all this to blow over, or we could attack it head on and pivot the business to an entirely online model. The show goes on, so we did. We worked like goddamn maniacs, hosting routine daily live Zoom workouts, training and nutrition seminars, workshops, quizzes, challenges, you name it. We had guest speakers on our socials, notably even at Middleton, who I'd met working with USN. We even grew two new members. This was the start of something new, where our now online business cover model coaching was born. We'll save that for another video. Coming back after COVID, however, things were strange. The market had changed. The challenge no longer had the same appeal. People hadn't socialized for two years. They didn't want to get fit. They wanted to go out. People were super hesitant. So we had to pivot again. We wanted to speak to those directly who were looking to take things to the next level and get into crazy condition. Our pro shoot was born. We were gonna take 60 everyday average Joes and turn them into modern day superheroes, getting them into peak photo shoot condition. Something that I myself had done year in, year out since 2014. It was time to take all of my knowledge, all of my expertise and use them to lead others down the path I had walked so many times and knew so well. It was a smash hit. Our results went up a whole other level and we are now proudly the UK's largest group transfer transformation providers with over 1,000 participants participating in our shoots since 2020. And that brings us to where we are today. We continue to thrive alongside our online counterpart, Cover Model Coaching. We also added an education leg to the business where we teach level two and three personal training to those looking to work their way into the fitness industry. We built something truly great in the city of Sheffield and are now spreading our reach worldwide. The sky's the limit and it feels as though we've only just begun. I am incredibly excited about the future and cannot wait to take you all on the journey with me. Thank you for watching this video. Please like, share and subscribe and I'll catch you all next time.